Hi, in the next few videos I'd like to tell you about the Black Scholes option pricing formula. I'm going to present here a very simple discrete case and anything I'm going to do is nothing more than algebra in a probabilistic language, in a martingale language. But it's this way of doing it that could be extended to continuous times and that can only be done in, in the martingale language and that led to the economic Nobel Prize in 97. So in this first video I'm just going to set up the, the background and the, uh, the probabilistic background of the, of the whole thing. I'm going to have a simple sample space. It will just consist of n, capital N outcomes. Capital N is a fixed number, it's not random. It's a fixed number, that's going to be my time horizon. And I'm going to have omega i equals to plus 1 or minus 1 with probability p and 1 minus p and the omegas are going to be i i d okay so i already told you the sample space and now i tell you the probability measure on it so it's plus minus 1 i i d random variables plus 1 probability p minus 1 uh, with probability 1 minus p for all i from 1 through capital n the number capital n the time horizon and the probability p are going to be fixed Okay, and the natural filtration, of course, is as usual, Fn is the sigma algebra generated by the first n of these omegas. Okay, so that's going to be the abstract probabilistic setup. And now I want to tell you about the simple model of the stock market. So uh, what is going to happen here is that there's going to be time... And time is going to start from uh, zero and then here is time. And for simplicity, I'm going to draw, I'm going to say that n is four now. Okay. And what is happening is that I have day, uh, well, this is, I'm going to call this day zero and then day one and I already see that I made a mistake here. So I want to call this time zero and this time one and this time two. And so n is three in this picture and I don't have this, this part here. Okay, so, so day zero goes here. Uh, it goes up to time mark zero. Day one is here, day two is there, and day n is the last day I'm looking at, and then time stops here, so nothing goes forward than that. Okay, and what we'll have is that we have stock values and we have bond values. So stocks have values Sn per unit and bonds will have value Bn per unit, okay? And this is on day n. So on day zero, I have value S0 and B0 for a stock and a bond respectively. And on day one, it's gonna be S1 and B1 and S2 and B2. And on day n, it's gonna be Sn and Bn. These are the values of the, of, the, of the stock on the days. Okay, now I have uh, a number of these, and I'm going to say that I have um, a n of these, oops, a n of these, and I have b n, uh, sorry, v n of these, of the bonds, so I have uh, a n many stocks and I have v n many bonds at least on the morning of the day. Okay, on the morning of the day. So I'm going to start with a not and v not many of the stocks and the bonds. And now during the day, I'm going to do some exchanges. And at the end of the day, I'm going to have a one of the stocks and v1 of the bonds and now there is the change from the unit price 
overnight here from S0 to S1 and from B0 to B1. But of course, midnight, I don't do any uh, exchanges, so I still have A1 and V1 of these. During the day, I'm gonna switch that to A2 and V2. Then again, there is the change overnight of the uh, prices per unit stock and units bond. And then in the next morning, I still have A2. Um, and V2 of them. Which I'm going to uh, change again to A3 and uh, B3. And in the morning of day N, it's going to be A3 and V3 still, which is of course the same as uh, in this picture, three is N. So A, N, and V, N in the morning of day N. Okay, now exchange, of course, has some rules. So my total wealth, my total uh, wealth on day N is of course, well, on one hand, it's going to be A, N, many of the stocks, S, N, and B, uh, and V, N, many, let put me V here, V, N, many of the bond B, N. So that's my total wealth of on day N, I'm going to call this X, N, okay? But what I'm doing actually during the day is I'm selling some stocks in exchange for some bonds or I selling some bonds in exchange for some stocks and therefore I can also write this as a n plus one many of the stocks and v n plus one many of the bonds now notice that uh, I do a fair exchange so the total wealth during the day does not change on those days uh, stock and bond market uh, values, unit prices. So I can freely change AN and VN in some way that the total wealth is conserved. So I can decrease AN by some amount to get AN plus one, at the same time increase VN to VN plus one, but I can only do that in a way that the total amount I have, the total wealth I have is unchanged. Okay, so these are the rules. So I start with A0 and V0, I sell and buy, and by the evening of day zero, I have A1 and V1 of them at those unit prices. Overnight, the unit prices change from S0, B0 to S1, B1. So in the morning, I have A1 of S1 and V1 of B1. During the day, I exchange some of those. I end up with A2 of S1 and V2 of B1 by the evening, overnight again S1, B1 turns into S2, B2, I still have A2 and V2 of those, I do some exchanges, A3 and V3 by the evening, again unit price changes, next morning I have A3 of S3 and V3 of uh, B3, so that's the process, uh, hoping uh, that this is clear, okay, and uh, now let me tell you what the stocks and bond unit prices do. The, the bonds are not very interesting because those are deterministic. So bonds, those are a safe bet. You know exactly what they do in this simple model. BN is just going to be uh, changing by a fixed rate R. So it's going to be 1 plus R to the N of B0. Okay which you could also say that uh, Bn is just 1 plus R times the previous day's unit price. Okay, and there is one more way you can write this, is that Bn minus Bn minus 1 is, if I want to factor out M minus 1, I could write 1 plus R Bn minus 1 minus 1 bn minus 1 so what we see is that the difference the change in the bond value is just r times bn minus 1 so that's the simple model for the bond nothing random here is just a fixed interest rate stocks are doing something similar but it is going to be random 
okay stocks are going to be random so for stocks I'm going to assume that I have something very similar but with a random rate so define Rn to be uh, B if omega is 1 omega n is 1 and a if omega n is minus 1 where a and b are some numbers where a and b are some numbers in fact a can even go negative and the only assumption I make is that it's not less than minus 1 and the, the fixed bond rate R is actually between A and B. So the stock rate can be below R and above R, but it can never be below minus 1, clearly. I mean, minus 1 means that I lose everything. It can't, can't be less than that. Okay, and in fact, there is a simple way of writing this Rn. If you don't want to, to do cases, you could also say it's A plus B over 2 plus B minus A over 2 times omega N. We are going to use this later on. Uh, just double check easily that when omega N is 1, then the A's cancel and we get B half plus B half, which is B. If omega N is minus 1, then the B over 2's cancel and we have A half plus A half, which is A. So this formula exactly does that. And with these Rn's, I'm going to have a very similar uh, recursion for the value of the stocks. So Sn is going to be the product. I goes from uh, 1 through n of 1 plus uh, Rn, Ri, times S0. When i is zero, uh, sorry, when n is zero, then we assume the empty product to be just one. So then it's just going to be s naught. Okay, so I probably should add a parenthesis here. Okay, the the main thing is that you can also say that s n is going to be one plus r n times s n minus one, and just repeating the same argument, s n minus s n minus one is going to be just Rn times Sn minus 1. So the Rn's are random. They can be A or B, and they are IID. Uh, with probability P, they are B. With probability 1 minus P, they are A, independently. And they just tell you how much the value of the stock changes from one day to the next. And this is just a rewriting, a simple rewriting of the increment in the stock unit price. Okay, so this sets the, the kind of the background for my stock market. This sets for a, a simple model for my stock market. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how, what, the, what the European option is and what the question we're going to answer is. And uh, okay, so that will kind of set up the scenario for the Black-Scholes pricing formula.